Damn, these are nice chairs. Yeah. <laughs> hey folks, today I'm here with Henderson Ventura, aka Hindi, uh, aka the most beautiful man at the show. Handy baby. <laughs> um, this fine individual brings us at Ventura. I don't know as much about it as I should, um, so I want to get his take. I'm going to be learning with you guys. So let's go through it, brother. Tell us about your heritage first, because I know that the Bacalera, William Ventura, yep. you've got a huge pedigree in the industry. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us your history. Man, I started... Uh I've been in the factory since I was a kid, man. Uh, that was one of the things. Uh, my brother and me, we always, you know, uh, wanted to be in the factory. Uh, my dad been in the business over 40 years. So how all the passion started for tobacco was like uh, my dad being master blender. Uh, all his friends and, you know, and the family used to have a reunion. Uh, Sunday morning in my house in the front porch. So I have like a, all those guys smoking cigar, talking about tobacco, the new crop, this and that. So it was like a bunch of master blenders that were friends with my dad and, and people that grow tobacco. And, this, and they were talking about the new farm, the new crop, the, that new blend tasted. So uh, me as a kid, I was listening to all that conversation all the time. I was curious, you know? Yeah. So my brother and me, we started to steal cigar when they, we were like very young, smoking it, sharing a cigar, and we developed an a, a early passion for tobacco in an early age. So when I was 17, my dad uh, opened his own factory, and, and I was, you know, I was planning a, another future for me, but he told me, hey, come to the factory, help me out. It's a new business. So I started there. And man, and my passion, is, you know, I have passion for tobacco. I love tobacco. And I started to blend cigar when I was 20. And so, so far I'm 31 and I've been in the business for 15 years. So I have the opportunity to work with a lot of boutiques brand, developing new, you know, new brands and five years ago 2006 2016 i started aventura with my partner marcel from switzerland and we we're starting europe switzerland germany italy sweden all around there then 2019 we introduced the brand in the united states for the ipcpr 2019 so we've been here for two years already uh that's this is uh, our our second trade show and and we've been having a great success so far. I'm pretty happy. We've been having a great show. We've been having a uh, an organic growth uh, with the last release so that we have the Roger Return. Uh, we gained some nice hype, uh, and I mean it been it been a cigar that put us on the map. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've been very creative. Creating like a unique product, unique uh, style blending. Uh, the packaging is unique. Even every line we have a different box. Uh, with the Roger Return, we came out with a metal label that I think is been popping up. You know, it's something different, unique. Uh, yeah. The concept of the blends also the the New Connecticut, the Queensbury. Uh, I think. I mean, it's not because it's my baby, but uh, it's one of the most unique Connecticut, refined blend, some medium body, uh, a lot of flavor. The complexity is is uh, you know is different to the rest of the Connecticut. And then we have the King's Gold uh, for the trade show here. We're releasing a, a new size for the King's Gold. We have it in Robusto and Toro, and we add in the Corona. So that blend is a blend that I, I created for uh, to highlight more the flavor of the broadleaf. It's a tobacco that I love to work with. Uh, the rich flavor, the sweetness, the dark chocolate, that, that yeah. those, you know, yeah. this is a fantastic flavor. It's one of the most complex tobacco by itself. So I want to highlight the flavor of the broadleaf. And I think I did it. And in the, in the Corona, it's in a smaller ring gauge and you get to taste more of the wrapper. 
So you get more than that. For me, it's like a chocolate bar yeah. when you're smoking that, that Corona. Yeah. You know, that cinnamon spice, the, the rich flavor of dark cacao, dark coffee, the sweetness, the earthiness. It's just a perfect balance between a strength and flavor. Yeah. You know, it's a full body cigar, but you, with a full body cigar that you can be able to, to enjoy all the notes that, that this cigar can give you. It just uh, make a, a fantastic cigar. So, um, man, this is pretty much about our company, pretty much about me. Uh, I'm a young master blender. I'm trying to change the game on the style of blending cigar and, and how we present the cigar also. I'm not a cool guy. I just have a manufacturer, uh, a dumb guy that has been trying to do things different out of the Dominican Republic. So. He, he says he's not cool, but look at this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to keep it together. <laughs> he, he looks like the cool guy. <laughs> um, I, I love the packaging. Um, I'm just going to take this out for just a second. Um, if, you've probably seen them on smallbatchcigar.com, guys. Uh, and if you read the blind review of the, uh, the King's Return or the Royal Return. Royal Return. Uh, King's Gold Royal Return. Uh, the Corona did come in right after they sold out of everything else, so I'm looking forward to that myself as well. Uh, the packaging is amazing. How hard is it to get this kind of thing done? Um, we take about two years to develop a, any project that we do. So, for example, we have all the projects done for the next three years, everything that we're going to release, but we work ahead on time. Uh, that project, for example... The Conqueror is a blend uh, that came out and playing with tobacco. So the main tobacco on that on that blend is like Corojo Original and Piloto Original. I call that blend like old-fashioned drunk spirits because it just remind me like uh, uh, when I used to steal cigar from my dad, like those flavor profile. Okay. Exactly that, but. Back in the days, people used to blend more mild to medium cigar. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of the same flavor profile, but stronger, you know, more intense. Yeah. So, I mean, I took like a, a year developing that blend and then about two years uh, playing with the boat and see how we make it work to make a box that look like a boat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. My partner, Marcel, he's a genius on uh, marketing, creating new stuff. Uh, he always come with uh, with uh, new ideas, uh, and I and then I just give the final touch, you know, to make it more cool and uh, and, and to make it work, it. and to make it work, you know, uh, on the manufacturing size, you know, with the box factory, how we can get it done, you know, this is more the difficult part, you know, how we can make our idea reality. So, um, I mean, it just. Uh, it's just like a kid, you know, trying to have the creativity, yeah. of, uh, you know, yeah. up there, you know, for, for the new generation. And, yeah. And get going. Not to be boring. You What's know, we, we try to not be boring, you know, we uh, try and, yeah. and we don't try to copy and repeat what everybody else got done yet already. Right. You know, we're trying to put it out different. Yeah. So. Do you get any uh, feedback from consumers or retailers or anybody on these boxes? What have you been hearing so far? Um, I mean, is one of the things uh, on the creation of the boxes, uh, we we think about everything, shelf space, uh, this and that. For example, that's a cabinet box. Even if it's like a, a boat, it's a cabinet box. Even the shape here, you know, oh, it's yeah. to, it's to, you can put the, the box in the shelf space like this, and it's just a cabinet box. You don't see the boat anymore. Right. Right, but genius. I mean, for presentation, when you get the the cigar in the store and nobody knows the product, you can put just the cigar, the box in the on the front desk. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. it's a nice presentation to catch the eyes of the people. It also takes you know a lot of space. Uh, the feedback people love the 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 box. A lot of people would just buy the the box just to have the, <laughs> just to have it. So yeah, I think the feedback is good. No yeah. complaints. No yeah. complaints at all. I love all. it. I love the extra details you put into it as well, man. Yeah. Um, okay, so you've got the packaging, 
you've got the blending. Uh, this cigar, like I said earlier, is very well received. We've got to get the rest of them blind reviewed. Um, what's the split? Is it 50-50? Is that what matters to consumer? The nice packaging and the blend? Is it 70-30, 80-20? What's kind of, uh, I guess, the, the, the fine line between branding and the actual flavor of the cigar? I mean, presentation... We, we've been creative, but we also been kind of classic. For example, if you see our labels, they're simple. You know, white background, we use a different color in each uh, line. Uh, but for us, it's more people to recognize the logo, the brand by itself. I mean, it can catch the eyes from the box, but then when you have the cigar in the hand, it's, it's, it's look like a something that being in the market for a long time already. Yeah, yeah. So it's classic. It's classic, clean, simple. Uh, but I think packaging play a major game, uh, and we've been trying to get that. And I will tell you, it can be seventy percent packaging and thirty the blend. Really? Yeah, to get people to try in the beginning. But that then to time. get the, the the to keep them moving, the cigar needs to speak by itself. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people can be. I, for example, I can tell you that because a lot of people want to try the King's Gold right. because the metal label is catch the eyes, and they look ah, it's look cool. I want to try that cigar. Everybody wants to try the cigar. And a lot of people can be nice, maybe just packaging. Yeah. Let me get a try, but then they get impressed by the cigar, and yeah. they keep on smoking it. They love it, you know, and they keep on smoking it. Yeah. So to get people to try 100% the packaging, uh, to keep people buying it, is 100% the cigar. Yeah. If you have a nice packaging and you don't have uh, a good cigar to back up what you have on presentation, you know, it's nothing. I mean, I focus on the cigar 100%. I'm a master blender. And I want to deliver it the best and, and something different, uh, something that when you try it, you say, yeah, this is not something common that I can find in another, you know, yeah. brand. Uh, but you need you need a nice dress, you know, yeah. for your cigar. And that's when the, the packaging uh, take the action. I like it. So... If, uh, if, no, if somebody has not smoked a cigar before and you were going to break down your line as beverages, how would you describe it? Like uh, this guy right here, what, what kind of beverage would that be and kind of work your way through them? Are we talking about champagnes, bourbons? What are we looking at? That Chris Bear 100% champagne, uh, even if it's a medium body, it has a lot of complexity. Uh, the Connecticut wrapper is, is, is smooth. Uh, and you don't want a, a, a beverage that overpowers the taste of the cigar. So the good thing about the sparkling wine is that every time that you take a sip, it's clean out, you, the bubble clean up, you pile it, and you can be able to enjoy the real flavor of the blend again. Yeah. So then, for example, then I got the, the for example, the Navigator. Uh, it's a very sophisticated blend, San Andres Maduro wrapper, but it's a medium body, smooth. Uh, it has a lot of complexity, but the balance is just perfect. Uh, you have a little bit of everything going on with that, with that cigar. And I like, with that cigar, uh, red wine. Okay. Because red wine, the sweetness of the red wine uh, fight against the, the taste of the San Andres wrapper that kind of dry out the palate a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the citrusy of the red wine, you know, you know, make more salive to your mouth, make uh, the experience of the smoke a little bit more creamy. So red wine with the blue. Then I have the, the Explorer. The Explorer is the most unique blend that I have in the portfolio. It's deep in flavor. Uh, have nice spice, that leathery and, and, and woody notes. I like to pair this one with bourbon. Ah, oh, okay. Bourbon or rum. Okay. So it has the intensity when you sip on the bourbon, that is intense also. Yeah. It's not gonna overpower the cigar because they both intense. So and then the Conqueror is a, just like I explained it, old fashioned. I'm a scat lover. 
I like scotch. So uh, the woody, the uh, good ancient scotch, the woody notes, you know, the that uh, mellow, nice spice on the scotch. Yeah. Is paired very well with the with the floral notes of the conqueror, the the little woody taste that give you that creaminess. Uh, it's a medium to full body, but the taste is very refined. So I like my that's a, a cigar that I blended for me, and I pair that cigar with scars all day. That's the one. And then the King's Gold yeah. is so rich. By itself, yeah. that sometimes I don't want to pair that cigar with nothing. I just want okay. to get the taste of that cigar by itself. Okay. But if I pair that cigar with something, I do, I do a scotch or cognac. Sometimes red wine. It's but, versatile. Huh? It's, it's very versatile. Yeah, but this is something that confused me a little bit yeah. uh, on the on that part of pairing the cigar. Yeah. It's just a cigar that I just want to enjoy the cigar by itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but recommendation, yeah, can be uh, a nice bourbon because they have the intensity. They both intense also. It's a full body cigar. The bourbon is not gonna overpower the the the, the flavor of the cigar. Maybe it can complement a little bit the woody and the smoky woody taste of the bourbon. Yeah. Can complement the the taste of the uh, of the King's Gold. So. Uh, that's how I uh, pair my cigar. Right, there. I just want to say like I'm, I'm Albert. Albert. Cisneros. Ah. Uh. So let me ask you this, master blender. Yeah. What does it mean? I don't get to ask too many people that question because not everybody's a master blender. So like, what what does it mean to you, and how do you do what you do? For me, the first is to know very well every variety of tobacco, every seed. When you understand the behavior of each tobacco, you know, you know how to put together uh, that tobacco to have a nice blend. But you need to understand the behavior, the different, the different sun, the different uh, uh, countries that you grow the tobacco. How uh, is the, the behavior of that seed if you grow that tobacco in this country, on this sun, and compared with this one? Each tobacco, it gives you a different stimulation in your tongue, in your palate. So when you get to understand the stimulation of each of those tobacco on your tongue, you can understand and you, you can translate that into a cigar. It not necessary to good tobacco from this area and a great tobacco from the other area, you put it together and it's gonna be a great cigar. Right. Not necessary. Sometimes right. they fight you know each other. Yeah. And you don't get to taste it like at the best of each one. Yeah. So that's that's the uh, the beauty about blending cigar. But you need to understand that and have a good memory for that also. Right. And have access to those tobacco. You know, uh me personally, uh, the beauty of, of for me to be on this business is to have the access to try all the different tobacco from different countries and different areas and different seats uh, to to have that connection and to have the opportunity to have great people around me that that they are uh, genetics engineer that they create their own seed and 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 they uh, do all the experiment, you know, trying new seed, and they give me to taste the tobacco and have my opinion. Yeah. Uh, also, to be able to uh, still using old seed that nobody use anymore because they've been having new uh, uh, genetic modification and seed to have better eels on the farms. Mm -hmm. And we be able to get the old seed to get the original taste of those tobacco and to understand that those tobacco and, and create fantastic cigars that create memory memory on um, on cigar consumers, that's a master blender, yeah. you know, that I, that I can explain to you why that cigar tastes like that. Yeah. How I can get uh, 
those flavor profiles in your cigar and just pick those two back and get it, you know, and understand that and translate that into, into the cigar production. Because some, there's people that understand tobacco, but then when you get down into production, that's a different animal, right. you know? Right. That's a different animal. When yeah. next year the crop is not that good, yeah. or you just change a little bit, so you can uh, come back and with the new crop, uh, make the judgment that you need to do to keep the consistency on that blend. Right. You know, it's not just create a nice cigar. It's mean a lot. I've been 15 years working on a cigar factory, and and every day is a challenge to keep the consistency on the cigar yeah. and to keep that cigar great. Yeah. And. That's a challenge that you need to understand. It's not just about to know the tobacco. And I've been doing every single part of the process, from the form, on the processing of the tobacco, and rolling. I can roll my own cigar. Uh, I'm in front of the production every day, from zero to 10. I manage the whole process. And that's why, after 15 years, with all the help and the experience, uh, people with experience that I've been having around and being in the factory every single day for 15 years, I can tell that I know tobacco, but this is something that you never stop learning. Right. I can know enough about tobacco, but you never stop learning. You never stop learning. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, I'm sorry. Every day I'm trying new tobacco. Every day the climate change. The soil is changing, so you need to be updating, you know, your palate, your be, the knowledge, you know, how to manage everything. The, the market change every time, and you, to be, you need to be ahead of that. Yeah. So I feel that I'm, uh, you know, up there, you know, learning every day and put as much effort as nobody else, you know, on the, on the manufacturing size. Right. Right. Yeah, you're a rock star, man. Um, is there a certain tobacco that you're looking forward to working with in the future or something you're kind of molding and playing with right now? Yeah, there's a... There's a... a some new tobacco. For example, we are work, I have the opportunity to work with one of the guys that I grew up seeing it. It's one, one of my dad's good friends. And he used to work for a company, now he's free, not contract. And, and this guy, he's one of the biggest genius in the tobacco industry. But behind scenes, not many people get to know him. And this guy has been developing a lot of new tobacco uh, through the years that, that maybe you as market before, you get being like a Man, where's that flavor come from? Yeah. And this guy have his own signature, how you know, with his tobacco. And okay. now uh, we have about three years developing a new seed that mainly is Piloto Cubano, uh, mix it with another four kind of tobacco mm. in one in one seed. And yeah. we uh, the first experiment we did that uh, in Pennsylvania here in the United States. Wow. And it's like a Dominican tobacco flavor profile. But 10 times more intense. The strength, the sweetness, the uh, intensity of the flavor is like uh, way, way, way up there. Interesting. So, yeah, and uh, last week I got, uh, I got the final uh, belt with some age already. He have uh, it been aging for two years. And I started to play with in a new blend so that I'm gonna put out in the future. Uh, but it's, I'm very excited because they said tobacco that nobody else has. Yeah. Uh, it's an ex exclusive tobacco for our factory. And man, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it cra it's crazy, it's crazy. I'm excited. That's good, man. I yeah. like seeing you excited. Because if yeah. you're excited, that means I should be excited. It's like the, the, the wrapper that we use on the floor. Mm. That's a tobacco. It's a hybrid seed uh, growing in Mexico. Okay. There's a hybrid Habana cigar in Mexico, huh. and and nobody yeah. used that tobacco. It's a tobacco that we spent seven years uh, trying in different countries, different area, wow. and and 
and that's one of the main characters of that cigar, that reddish, nice Habano uh, with that deep leathery and woody flavor uh, that I love about that cigar. And that's one of my main point with the brand. So the first blend that I put out for Aventura, I used that tobacco that was very unique and different. And that tobacco, that cigar has something specific. Or you love it or you hate it. But when yeah. I when I started with the brand, I wanted to create something different, and yeah. that was uh, that was uh, the result. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. If um, if our audience could only know one thing about you or Aventura, what would you want them to take away from this whole conversation? From the whole conversation is um, is. Um, I will say the next generation of the cigar manufacturer. Uh, I'm a 31 years old uh, guy, and I've been busy for 15 years. I do all my best to learn as much as I can about tobacco and cigar to keep that that culture, you know. So the next generation of cigar smoker can be able. To, to enjoy the experience of, of past generation. And not just that, to do it better. And to have better product, better cigar, better quality on the cigar. Yeah. And that's what, what I want, you know, for people to know about me, you know, that I'm doing my best to get the best for the next generation. I love it, man. I yeah. love it. Look out for Henderson Ventura, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure, brother. My pleasure. Thank you, so Thank you very much. Yeah.